Okay, so we're looking at the way you can use language to help you to understand and develop a particular concept. Let's imagine that you're studying a text with a focus on a particular concept. Quite often you'll be struggling to get past the really obvious, and that's really common. And what I'm going to show you is how to use language to explore new possibilities. I call this little strategy a concept equation. You start with a particular concept. So the example that I'm going to be using is violence. Generally, concepts are abstract nouns. The second thing that you need to do is make a list of as many classifying adjectives as you can. Now, you can go onto the internet and look for lists and compile your own and reuse lists that you've used before. But what's really important is that you're using what's called a classifying adjective. So to explain that, I'm going to give you a little example. Classifying adjectives can't take a modifying adverb. For example, very. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples here to make that clearer. We've got two concepts and both of them have a modifying adverb in front of them. The first one is very large and the second one is very vegetarian. So you'll see that very works for large. You can have something that's very large. So that means that large isn't a classifying adjective. The second example, very vegetarian. Something is either vegetarian or it's not vegetarian. There's no in-between. To have in-between would mean that there would be a little bit of meat and that would mean it's no longer vegetarian. So you can't use the adverb very in front of vegetarian. So that means that vegetarian is a classifying adjective. So it's something that we can use for these kinds of concept equations. Once you've got your list, you need to apply that list to each of your adjectives. Probably the most important part of this whole process is your attitude. It's really important that you do not test and dismiss these different combinations and decide that one or another is, is or isn't working. If you do that, none of them will work. You have to assume that all the combinations are possible. And then the next step from there is to work out why it's possible. So you assume that all of them are possible and then you work out why it's possible. You can't dismiss any of them as being wrong. And so this is pretty much where language does the thinking for you. Basically, because of the way the English language works, all of these combinations are possible combinations. As you're then going through each of these examples, what you want to be doing is explaining what would count as an example of the way that works. The next step is where you apply it to the text that you're studying. I'm going to go through an example of the way this works so that you can go away and do some of your own. So you'll see that I've got a list of adjectives and my concept, which is violence. The definition of it is that it's to cause damage or harm. The first one you see there is physical violence. So that's an easy one because it's literal and it pretty much means to break or hurt something. So for example, breaking a lamp or punching a person. They're examples of physical violence. Next one's a little bit harder. This one's grammatical violence. Grammatical violence could be a sentence that confuses people because of the way the words are arranged in that sentence. Another example of grammatical violence could be some kind of an unreasonable demand because they're all sort of using grammar in some way to cause damage or to cause harm. The next one is numerical violence. One really simple example is whenever statistics are used deceptively. It's also whenever something in a large volume causes damage. So for example, a plague, okay, that's because of the numbers that are involved. And finally, archival violence. To archive something is to store usually historical documents or artifacts in, in a safe manner so that people later on can look at them. So some examples of archival violence are misrepresenting the facts using archival information. So for example, whenever someone is rewriting history, which is that idea of the phrase that the history is written by the winner. Um, it could also be causing damage to archive, so either literally through vandalism like a fire, or by some way corrupting the information. So something as simple as switching the name tag on two different artifacts is going to completely corrupt that information and therefore that's causing damage to that archive. Hopefully you can now have a go at using an adjective equation to expand your understanding of a particular concept. Obviously then the next step is to apply it to the text. Now given that not every text deals with every single concept, the ones that you come up with in a list like this, they're not all going to work for your particular text. But when you've got that right attitude, you can quite often find an example that you may have dismissed earlier. You'll probably be surprised how many examples you do find, and then you can go through and choose the best ones. Also, your examples will become more sophisticated because you're thinking conceptually.